So in the last video, we went over on how to set up the project so we can navigate it a bit easier. And in this video, we're going to be going over how to create some commands, how to add the response system, and so on. Just the basic functionality to make this bot work efficiently. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create these commands. And to do that, we just have to create a function. So we're going to call the first one the start command. And you can actually name it whatever you want. I just recommend you use the naming convention command just to make it a bit easier to understand. And it's going to take two arguments. One is going to be the update and one is going to be the context. The context is just going to be used for backwards compatibility according to the documentation. It just makes it more compatible with older versions. Then we want to go ahead and call this update and we're going to type in dot message dot reply underscore text. And inside here, we're going to write what happens when the user types slash start. So inside here, I'm going to type in hello there, exclamation mark, I, then we need to create an escape slash so we can insert another apostrophe and type in I'm a bot, what's up, question mark. So this is the text that will appear each time the slash start command gets used in our chatbot. Now we can actually make this pretty easy and just copy this three times since we're going to make three different commands. And the second command is going to be the help command. And inside here we'll just say, try typing anything and I will do my best to respond. And the final command is going to be a custom command. So as you can see, these are very fast to build and all you have to do is insert the logic you want inside here. You can insert a link in here, you can insert some processed message, you can insert a weather report. This is the place you want to return the string though. And each time you do the slash start command, it will trigger this function. Or if you do the slash help command, it will trigger this function over here. So the custom one is just to demonstrate that you can create your own and you can make as many as you want. But for the custom one, we're just going to type in, this is a custom command. You can add whatever text you want here. And this will also be a good moment to show you how to add these commands to our bot. Because right now, if we go to our Telegram file and you do slash start, you're going to notice that we will get no hints on how to use it. It doesn't tell us what it does. So we need to actually go back to our bot folder. And inside here, we want to go ahead and edit the commands. And as you can see, it gives us a very small set of instructions that we need to manually name the instructions and what they do. So the first command is going to be the start command. And start is going to have the description of find out what this bot can do. Then under that, we have to go ahead and type in the help command. And here we will write get assistance for this bot. And finally, we have a custom command. And that's just going to take custom as a command name. And we can type in this is a test command that you can test out. Then we just have to go ahead and click send and it's going to use these as the commands. Now if we go back, we can go to Luigi and if we do something such as slash, it's going to give us these commands with the description of what they do. So we can go ahead and click on custom and then we're going to get this piece of code executed as soon as we finish our bot. For now, it still does nothing because we did not start the program and there's still a lot of code to be added. But I also have to mention that if you want to add more commands, you're going to have to go back here and you're going to have to go back to your bot, edit the bot and edit the commands. And then you're going to have to rewrite all of the commands starting with command one, command two and command three and so on. So each time you edit these commands, you need to do them from scratch. And for that, I recommend you actually write these down in a separate file so you can just copy and paste them with ease in case you decide to change them later. But in this case, we have three commands and we provided three descriptions, so everything is perfect. We can go back to Luigi and we can continue with our code. The next thing we want to do is create a message handler. And this is going to handle what happens when the user sends messages to the chatbot. So we will type def handle underscore message and that's going to take an update and the context as always. And we want to take the text, which is going to be the string of the update.message.text. And we want to set that to lowercase so we can easily process that message later. Because just as a quick reminder, Python is case sensitive. So a lowercase letter and an uppercase letter will be recognized as two completely different symbols. 
So setting it to lower just makes it a lot easier to process. Then we're going to go ahead and log this. So logging.info and inside here, we're going to create a formatted string. It's going to say user quotation marks. And inside here, we want to provide the user ID so we can later use this in case we want to send direct messages. So update dot message dot chat dot ID says, and we want to insert the text. Then we want to create the bot response. So he will type in bot response and it's going to be the update dot message dot reply text. And inside here, we will insert the text. Next, we need to go ahead and write a function that handles the errors. So def error, it's going to take an update and the context. And inside here, we're just going to type in logging dot error and type in F update caused error. And inside here, we will type in context dot error. And that will take care of logging any potential errors that will happen in the bot. So we can later process that and understand a bit better why something went wrong. Now, finally, we can set up the bot so we can actually run it and test out that it's actually functioning correctly. All it's going to do at this point is mimic what we say. So if we text hello, it's going to say hello. If we say Apple, it's going to say Apple. And that's just to show that the bot actually can process the message. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and run the program. And to do that, we're going to type in if name is equal to main. Then we're going to have to create an updater, which is going to equal an updater. And inside here, we can insert our API key. So API key. And we're going to use the context and set that to true. Then we need to create a dispatcher. And this is going to be used to register the handlers and make them usable. So DP is going to equal updater.dispatcher. And the first thing we have to add are the commands. So dp.addhandler, and it's going to be a command handler. And here you're going to insert what the command text is going to be. So for this example, every time the user does slash start, it's going to set off the start command. So make sure you name this in accordance to what you have in your chatbot. And that's going to take the start command as the handler. And make sure you don't add the parentheses at the end because that is not required for these handlers. And it's actually easy for the other ones. You can just duplicate this and inside here, we'll go ahead and type in help, custom, and then do the same thing for the command. So help command and custom command. Then we want to go ahead and handle the messages. And to do that, we'll call our dispatcher, add handler. And this time it's going to be a message handler. And we need to provide a filters.text and it's going to handle our message handler again without the parentheses. And then we also want to log all errors. And to do that, we just go ahead and call our dispatcher, add error handler and insert our error. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, the final two lines of code that will start our bot and make sure that it runs continuously. So we'll go ahead and, and here we will call our updater.start polling. And inside here, you need to insert a rate in seconds. And this is an interval rate, which means if you put five as a number here, it's going to check for new updates every five seconds, which means if the user types in hello, about five seconds later, the bot is going to process that and respond with hello. You can even just insert zero if you want this to be very fast. But I think for this example, I'm just going to insert one second. It's just so you can control the interval at which it updates your bot. And to make sure it runs continuously, you have to call updater.idle. And at this point, we can actually go ahead and run the program now and test it out. So as you can see, we have the info log that says starting the bot and we have the app scheduler, which just tells us that the bot is running essentially. And now if we actually go to our bot and type something such as hello, we should get hello as a response back immediately. And in our logs, you're going to see that user with this ID says hello. We can also go ahead and write something random just like that and click enter. And it's going to return to us the exact same string that we provided to it. Let's add a kissy face. And it's going to return to us a kissy face as well. Now let's go ahead and try our test commands as well. So slash and slash start. And you're going to see that it's going to tell us, hello there, I'm a bot, what's up? And we can do the same thing for help and the same thing for custom. 
it actually processes what we defined it to do and returns to us the appropriate response that we have defined up here in the command part of our program. And another thing you should keep in mind is that this program or this bot will only function as long as this script is running, which means if you want this to continue to run while your computer is turned off, you're going to have to host it on a website or buy a separate computer that you can run 24 seven. But even if you close the program like this, the bot is still going to be able to respond to you without a problem. The script just has to be running in the background for this to work. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in this video. And in the next video, we're going to be going over a nice way to actually process the messages so we can return a response to the user in this message handler over here. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.